Well, I think your analysis was very straight line. The street doesn't run in a straight line. Kid, you cannot tell your neighbor he is stealing ducks when you are stealing phones. As High Commissioner, I was wrong. As Charandas Prasad, I reacted naturally how any person would have. I did not come here for food for that kind of abuse. I did not come here for that kind of abuse. If you're gonna go down that road, I'll walk off. But it's all okay once they're talking. If they were talking, I could not have been here today. You got AD and uh -huh. ADHD. I got that. No, 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 calm down, calm down. I think I've done enough in terms of taking our team um, out of trouble from losing. Tomorrow, Taylor. You got, you got screwed. I'm reading the script now, and the first person that comes to my mind to play a detective, yes, but an erratic detective, Mickey Rodriguez. Why you not feel good supper in young? Why a man and supper woman look? Yeah, but how you deal with that? You deal with that. We must encourage platforms like this because it brings together different people and allows for discussions. To, to take place in our country on a multiplicity of fundamental issues. Yeah. Kid, you apologizing for no, something no, 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 you no, think no. I did is wrong. I don't no. want you to do that and you should not have done that. Hi, good evening. Welcome once again to the Gil Diary Freddy Kisun Show. We also coming to you live on YouTube, wherever you are. Good night, good morning. As always, it's a pleasure coming to you. It's coming on to the weekend, and Freddy and I are going to call on you guys once again. Please, uh, those who are living in Guyana and wherever you are, please uh, exercise caution on our roadways. Too many people are dying. Too much nonsense is happening on our roadways. I would want to say to you um, that the last couple of days has been pretty interesting. I don't want to waste any time tonight. There's an interesting man in the house, our guest here today, uh, tonight. And we're going to be talking things diaspora. We're going to be talking things uh, technology. It's important for this country to move forward. Uh, technology brings us closer. Technology makes a lot of things uh, uh, easier. Um, and technology bridges a lot of gaps uh, uh, across this country, across the world. It makes the world a, a global village. Over the last couple of days, I've been paying very close attention, and I would want to say before I hand over to Freddie how, uh, how much happy I am with the feedbacks that we've been getting. Every single day, my phone Sorry. rings. Um, every single day I hear from you, I receive texts, I receive emails, and people are really, really, uh, you know, invested in this country. They want to see a better country and they're taking charge. They're doing what they have to do. So um, I'm very happy that you guys would have been reaching out to us, uh, making recommendation, but not only that, um, they have so many problems, so many things that is happening in this country. And uh, it's difficult sometimes for us uh, as as talk show um, analysts and you know uh, host of, a, of 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 a forum like this to really listen to everybody. You got to forgive us. Sometimes you can't uh, answer every single one of those um, uh, WhatsApp messages and the other text messages and the calls that you send. And we still have our business that we attend to on a daily basis. And we've been doing this free myself for Freddy Kisun and myself traveling every day, three, uh, three times a week uh, coming down to the studio um, to make sure that we give our opinions to talk with you guys. Um, but uh, I'm very happy to see uh, the kind of feedbacks that we, we, we've been getting with regards to shows and the numbers have spoken for themselves. So uh, you're great. Uh, you have been really um, great to us too and respectful and for that kind of conversation and level of maturity is something that I'm happy about. Without further ado, I want to say good night to my co-host Freddy Kisun. Um, Freddy, it's over to you. Welcome to the program, wherever you are, as usual, different time zones. Good morning, if you're in India, 
uh, the UK. Good night, good afternoon. This, when this program first started, we said that we will bring personalities, citizens, figures, actors, people in general, who have some achievements to their name, but are not highlighted in day-to-day -day life around the world in Guyana, in the region. But they are people that should be highlighted, that we should bring to you. And when we do that, knowledge is gained. You know that there was someone in the 70s who did a tremendous job for Guyana. You will know that there was someone in the 80s. You're too young to know what that person did in the theater, in engineering, in journalism. So we have a guest this evening that um, you pick up the papers, you go on social media, and you wouldn't know much about his history, but he has a very important history. Now he straddles different horizons. This evening we will talk about the diaspora. He's very active in the diaspora. He's what you would call a technology guy. So he know about technology and therefore uh, the business side to that will, will come out, how he feels about business prospects in Guyana. But he also has a political side to him, which um, you did, you perhaps don't know, but which is very interesting. And therefore, when we zoom in on the political side, knowledge is gained because you know about this guy and what he did in in politics so without further ado our guest this evening is salim Nizeruddin. as usual he comes from a background of business and so you probably would be interested in in a country where business is booming, you're probably interested in what he has to say, seeing that he has a lot of experience in business. But I'm particularly interested in highlighting for the purpose of our researchers and history, his, his political angle. So Salem, thanks for being on this program. And when you leave and come back again, make sure you contact us so we will have you again. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Freddie. It's a pleasure being here. You know, um, I've watched you and um, seen, you know, the impact that you've made on the national conversation in Guyana for the past uh, 20, 30 years. And um, by no means, um, it has helped to guide us, all Guyanese and, and myself too, you know. So, uh, and of course, I had the pleasure of being a colleague of yours at, 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 at some times, you know. Um, so, uh, I'm happy to be here and I'm glad to share my experiences, right? Experiences um, well with, with all of Guyana and to all your viewers, um, wherever they are. And I understand you do have a, an incredible diaspora viewership which I believe, um, um, you know, is key because, you know, the, the diaspora is watching you guys because they want to know what's up, what's going on, and, and how can we uh, play our part in um, helping move, it, move the process forward. All right, Salim, Gildari has gone into business the past two years, and you guys have a business yeah. head. I am the historian, the political analyst. I think there are some important questions that need to be filled by you, and I'd like to have your views sure. on them. Now, list, I, during the 2020 election campaign, I did an interview with uh, Robert Badal, and you were the campaign manager for Change Guyana. Could you listen to the glowing words he had to say about you? And then I'll ask you to, to square that with what happened in 2020. Now listen to this, please. Guys, within two weeks, we have managed to have somebody representative across this country because he has the connection. He has the connection. This guy... How, how, how really do you? How do you? Even the DPP guy that came to me, and I couldn't trust him, right? Has no such connection as this guy. This guy is a 
Now, here, you heard what Robert Badal said about you. You know so many people. You have a reach that others didn't have. I am going to ask you what what played out then with Change Guyana. I know it got the second highest votes after Anug. But why wasn't it much more um, stronger than that? You were the campaign manager, right? Right, and and and, and change Guyana, um, and I'm I'm so proud that I was part of it at that time, you know, and and a lot of my political history, uh, for you know that I've been in Guyana. You know, I grew up in in New York City, and um, from the age of seven eight, I was in um, you know elementary school, uh, middle school, high school, college, and so on, and throughout my career. Um, I thought, um, you know, I, 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 I would, there were so much struggles in the in the eighties and nineties. You know, Iran, um, Nicaragua, yeah. uh, um, Afghanistan, and so many other issues that were happening around the world. And I, as a guy, and he's used to attend those uh, events and 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 protests and 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 conferences to to discuss these these things. And as a as a Guyanese, I felt you know what um, I don't see them talking about Guyana, and I know and I know Guyana had some issues too at that time. You know, it was the pre uh, pre PPP nineteen ninety two years um, when I was in high school, and and you know we we heard about dictatorship and we heard about tyranny, and we heard about oppression in Guyana and and this being banned and so on. So uh, I took upon upon myself. Uh, from from that time that when I when I finished my studies in the United States and by the way I did advertising and marketing um, that that was my my thing uh, to, to come back to Guyana uh, and I spent 11 years um, after university in Guyana um, working for one of the largest ad agency at that time Guy Enterprise um, I was you know running the the short Guy Enterprise. Um, and uh, I mean, for significantly for those who don't know, I was the first person to introduce desktop publishing to Guyana. Uh, if you remember, Guy Enterprise was the agency that that that, that um, went to, to fully computerize with their with their um, uh, art department, the video department. Then I was also instrumental in helping Chronicle uh, and and other smaller newspapers to to get on to get more digital. Uh, then of course um, I went on to um, you know Le Park and as marketing director and so on. But in all of that, in all of that, that was like my profession, so to speak. But behind the, the real me was how do I help to change Guyana to, to make it a better place. My motto as a personal guy is that uh, it can be done better. You know anything can be done better. And and in those days, early days when I came back uh, to Guyana, I was part of many uh, movements uh, that were looking at change in Guyana. You know whether it was Roar, for example. You know I was I was one of the founders of Roar uh, along with Ravi Dev and others. And um, you know and then Change Guyana, of course. I'll come back to your question. Um, you know Robert Badal at that time. Um, was about to launch a, a political campaign, and he asked a few people. Um, and I was I was in New York then, and he asked a few people, "Who can I get who understands Guyana, who understands marketing, who understands brand branding, who can do messaging, and who can you know create a campaign that I can platform my message on? You know, my message of of economic development and 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 more efficient." Efficient running government, bigger business, smaller governments, and so on, and um, and I and I think he reached out to a few of his his colleagues, and and they and they called me up and said, hey, Salem, are you interested in going to Guyana uh, for a year um, to 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 help Robert Badal with his Change Guyana? Um, of of course, as a as a as a person who loves to change things, you know, and make things better. Um, and I knew Robert Badal, um, you know, even before then. 
um, I, I, was, I was glad to take up the challenge to come to Guyana and to <clears throat> build something from scratch. Uh, and he was right. You know, I do have, I've traveled throughout Guyana. Um, I've lived um, uh, in many, many villages across Guyana. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, know people, I can get things done. So w whether it was finding, you know, coordinators or getting the right message and all that kind of stuff, you know, uh, I was able to do that. Uh, you know whether uh, you know whether change Ghana was going to win or not. You know that that was something you could have debated. Um, I I don't think I was gunning to win an election. Um, I know the reality. I'm a marketing business guy. I know the reality. We we are we are in a very polarized uh, political environment, and 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 we knew that our impact it, will be in our message. The impact was going to be in the message. And to a large extent, we I, I think um, Robert Badal, to his credit, and he's a very, uh, very strategic thinker. Um, he, he, he's good at what he does. There's no doubt that he, ha he has changed the skyline of Guyana. You know, we all, we all are saying that, right? The man changed the skyline of Guyana. So he's got something going for him. And I was proud that I was able to take um, the essence of what he believes in um, um, uh, the, the, the direction of the, of the economy and and our platform was the, all economics. You know, um, it wasn't about you know the because because the politics of our country has undermined our de our development, our economic development. So so I was proud to be part of that and and will continue to be and and for him to sort of endorse. Um, and and to, to 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 back my abilities, um, I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm I'm double happy with that. Yes, Hello. thank you very much, Zay Chief. Um, I want to bring you, uh, you know, the issue of small parties will always be coming to the fore. In the next two years, constitutionally, we are going to be headed to the polls again. Um, 2020 would have been uh, an interesting year uh, for the analysts and historians in terms of what small parties would have brought to the table. But being it, uh, being that as it may, we have oil and gas, and you have um, uh, Air Finale in the mix of things. Who people th seem to think that is pressing the right buttons mm -hmm. and is doing what he's doing. Do you believe with what has happened with the implosion of AFC, which a lot of people were putting, you know, a lot of confidence in them, and then what would have happened between 15, uh, 2015 and 2020, that there's any place uh, with the polarization of votes in Guyana, uh, the way how it's going, that any small party is going to make any dents come 2025? Um, I think the dynamics of any country require um third voices um fourth voices you know um you know running on 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 what we have currently for the past 58 years can be a dangerous path you know and i think and i think to a large extent the bigger parties should see the value that smaller parties bring because not all of us can be part of a of of a, of a, of a, of a, of a elephant size party you know some of us wants to want to be and find vehicles in in, in smaller opportunities um i believe afc has done a major disservice when it comes to a to, to what i've just explained in terms of that third voice that third um um you know i, I don't i don't think any third party was is going to win in any major way in the coming election um uh, for the simple reason that um, there's a major distrust uh, for third parties, um, not, not because third parties don't have a, um, a good platform or a good message or, 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 or see things in a different way, uh, but more so from a voter's perspective, you know, where, where, they, see, where they see that, that the impact of a, of a vote um, you know, means a lot more if they if if they if they kept it um, as it is. But I, I don't believe um, I, I don't believe third parties um, in in Guyana uh, moving forward uh, is really um, you know a way forward. You know, I mean, I, I think our social, ethnic, 
political makeup um, has kind of um, locked us into different camps. And we've got to figure out a system um, um, where the, these two camps can start talking to each other and, and work with each other um uh you know to 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 make things roll forward in in, in, in as fast as possible uh, I, I i would have glad if we had lived in a in a in a society where um third parties can can be given a little more um uh, opportunity by by voters uh but i think um and, and they did uh, they did right in in the afc years yeah. in 2005 uh, 20, 2011 and so on but um but the whole premise of a third party is to provide a middle ground message clarity of issues um um a direction for 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 um for voters to consider you know a lot of us don't necessarily uh, vote for third parties, but we listen to their message to figure out how how we should vote and what we should do after our votes. You know, so I mean, it's unfortunate that what happened with the AFC and their demise. Um, I, I think I think their inability or their impatience in not staying the course and 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 becoming a much bigger third force. And for all intents and purposes, they might become this. The, the second four, the, the, you know, the, the, a big party by now, but unfortunately, history will um, will 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 attest that they have chosen to go a route that um, their own supporters, I would be, I believe, um, would not agree with, and 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 today we are uh, back to kind of square one. Bear up with me. We're gonna come. Sure, sure, sure. I know you. You, you got a lot to say about. <laughs> business and i know you have an expertise in that um robert but that words were quite um eulogistic of you this guy knows people this guy knows. but bear up with me because i think what the next question i'm sure the researchers are going to put it in their book that they're writing on guyana you were a heavyweight in the 20 election uh campaign for the afc uh any election campaign manager is a heavyweight so you one can say that that person manages the campaign mm -hmm. so you managed the campaign in 2011 Correct. and then you disappeared in 2015 uh there had to be a reason that i was part of the 2011 campaign yes. sometime we met each other what cause you and the, the fc was uh, uh the new kid in town it was doing well why did you disappear after the 2011 um election was there an idea did the serious differences emerge with you and the afc leadership and you said look goodbye well, that's a very good question, you know, um, and come back to what Baral said, you know, uh, the man knows what he's doing and he's, he's, a, he's a marketing guy and so on. So I am not, just to let you know, I am not an AFC member. I've never, I'm not a founder of AFC. Um, uh, when they popped on this the political scene, I felt that it was, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a good, you know, a, a good a, a good freshness that for Guyanese politics in 2005 and so on um, I followed them of course uh, like I followed all other parties and the things that are happening in Guyana um, but I was never a member of the AFC when when they were looking for a marketing person or campaign manager uh, in 2011 uh, my name popped up I, I went went through a series of interviews and meetings and uh, I made a lot of proposals and, and all that stuff um, on what I believe could be a campaign for 2011. Um, 
so 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 they hired me you know they hired me as a marketing guy i was never a, a member so to speak and Kamraj and everyone can attest to that that uh, i came in as a professional um to to help them to um organize and create a structure that can deliver um a message and and and, and bring the votes right and and get the votes out uh which i did um and uh, you know and but in terms of uh and uh, sadly um 2011 um the day of the election I had to leave. That was a, that's a memorable election for me, not only because AFC won seven seats and all that kind of stuff, but the day of the election itself, I had to leave the country because my, my brother passed away the same, like the, the day before, I think. Um, I had to run out. But, but, in, but again, I was never a member of AFC, so it's not like, um, you know, I'm staying with them for that five years and 2015. When I heard that, they were going to um, join with the join PNC. with the the P APNU at that time, if PNC APNU. Um, I was taken back. You know, it, it was you know not not something that their voters wanted. In fact, they spoke so harshly against uh, both the PNC and the PPP. You know, um, during their campaign. Um, you would have thought they would have done something like that, but I think I think what drove AFC into a union with APNU was their uh, thirst to get rid of the PPP um, at the cost of losing their own base, you know, um, and that's what re that's what really happened. Um, and and unfortunately, you know, I I I, I took on um, PNC and APNU in in just about in my entire Guyanese political um, career, so to speak. And I, 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 I don't see myself being comfortable making that decision or working with them. Of course, they never call me back. <laughs> That's the other thing. You know, they never call me back mm -hmm. to say, hey, Salim, would you like to um, work with us? I would have, I would have declined, of course, uh, because it goes against the grain of what third parties or what um, uh, a, a party of change um, is looking to accomplish. You know, you, you, you join a party that that has a, a very um, um, morbid history, you know, a party that has, um, you know, uh, like broad guy and weird is. I like that. <laughs> that your party that has a, a morbid history. You know, Sounds like Freddie <laughs> Yeah, and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, and, 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 and I don't think it was, it, it wasn't the freshness that I saw in 2011 and before that, it it is it is it has become rotten, you know. So I I don't think um, the voters are going to treat AFC in the next election kindly, if they do go. Um, the local election, um, I guess they they were they might have been afraid to, um, you know, test the water so to speak. Um, it would have been a bad test. Mm -hmm. um, so the, I think that I think they did the right thing staying out, and I think in in twenty twenty five at that election. Um, we'll see, but uh, but I believe uh, voters in the next election um, are, are quite different. I, th I, th I think the oil and gas and the economy has really steered our our, our voter psyche uh, differently, you know. And, and we'll see what happens. But I but I believe um, with an extremely weak opposition, with uh, with an almost dying third force um, in AFC. Uh, and and the, the, the and, and with the strength of the PPP and and and, and the president's um, you know outreach and and the energy that we see now, I think you know will will definitely see a different dynamics playing out in 2025. I want to bring you uh, my understanding, layman's understanding of what a lawmaker is. Um, in in the United States, where, where which is a place that you live in, my understanding uh, of reading, I reside right <laughs> where, 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 yes where you reside um, that the lawmakers mm -hmm. there they would pick up uh, like certain um, areas uh, which they believe would would get their votes, but which also they're passionate about. In Guyana, it seems as if everybody's throwing the line, and whenever something happens. Um, then the party or the people that they represent 
that somebody would put to put something there but i find it very really there's so many things that's wrong with this country i don't see it on the opposition and the government would come up and pass some laws based on 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 things that are progressing in this country whether it has to do with um uh, the budget or it has to do with road accidents or something they would do that but i'm not seeing a lot of the lawmakers in our country the member of parliaments really understanding what is their role in this country the role that they're supposed to be playing in parliament and could you enlighten us based on your experiences in the united states as to what you believe that they should be doing here what they're not doing yet the problem that i have with that we have lawmakers, member of parliaments, and let's call it Jack the Jacket. Many of them go there, they get a salary or a stipend or whatever you want to call it at the end of the month. No big thing with that. I don't have any issue mm -hmm. with that. They should be respected. What I have an issue with, with the side from they have their duty free um, um, allowances and so on, and unlimited vehicles, and you know the nonsense that happens there. Um, we see them, they're doing the work, the parliament doesn't meet enough. I want you to tell the Guyanese people what is the role of a, a lawmaker in America in modern countries as against what um, is happening in Guyana. Well, I, that, that, that's a very fundamental question. And I think it, it could lead to one of the reasons why um, Guyana, after 58 years, is now beginning to, to start development. You know, um, you know, I was just talking to some guys earlier today and, and, you know, we were talking about, you know, one of the problems with Guyana is that we have resources, so we're not creative enough. We just dig the ground, take the gold and sell it, you know, and, and it has caused us to kind of not be creative enough to build a society that can really grow. You look at countries, you know, like the cliche country Singapore with zero resource, but you have to get very creative to get things done. But come back to your question. Um, fundamentally, um, an election or a politician who is in office, he is um, looking to barter to do a transaction because he doesn't have power to do everything. The people has the power. So he's trying to get that power in him so he can get something done, right? Without that power, he can't get anything done. So, so voting to a large extent and every election that we go to is a transaction we're making. We are giving our power to someone so that someone can deliver for us what we want. That's what they That's want. Correct. Yes, what they sense. want. Right. So, so, so I want road. So I give you my power to build the road for me. I want better education. So I give you the power. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm transferring my power to you, uh, and collectively more power, so that you can represent us and get that done. In the U.S., as you, as you're aware. It's very, very, very issue based, especially uh, maybe not in national politics, <laughs> but definitely the, the 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 state and the the, the county and the city. Um, the it's, it's very transactional based. In other words, um, my community um, has extremely bad garbage collection. For uh, just an example, right now. A politician comes up and says, you know what, I've got a new idea for garbage collection. I'm going to be doing this and doing that and doing that. But I need your vote, right? So we go and we give him his vote. And he gets elected. And now we, we turn to him and say, hello, where is my gar garbage collection system that's going to keep our city and our streets clean? And the guy's like, he ha hin and all that kind of stuff. So... What happens in the next election? He's out. If he doesn't, if he doesn't deliver that garbage collection system, he is out. What if he does deliver? He gets more power to do it. So I think um, the role of uh, of politicians and elected officials, and uh, this would go across the board for I, I would imagine members of the cabinet as well as a member of parliament, and even those they they appoint, is is to really. Um, understand that the power that they have is because someone uh, gave them that power in order to get something done for them, mm -hmm. for those people, you know.
Um, but I think what has happened, what has been unfolding and what has unfortunately become almost a culture in Guyana um, is because we're so wrapped up and caught up in kind of fear politics, which is driven by, you know, ethnic um, race related um, politics. You know, uh, we, we, we go to the polls uh, not to vote for something like an American would, I would go and vote for better garbage collection. You know, we, we go to the polls today to keep someone out, you know. And when you vote for when you vote for the wrong reason like that to keep someone out, it means that those who came in can do whatever they want, you know. And we see that happening, you know, throughout Guyana's history where politicians come in and they're not answerable uh, um, to a large extent and uh, to, to, to their to those who voted for them. Well, I, I, want, I want to stop you there. The reason why I asked, and Freddie, bear with me. Yeah, and sure. I know yeah, 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 yeah. Look, we got every single day, Freddie would receive calls and, and things. I'm getting calls every day. And I said, a big, big issue in Guyana. I don't see any parliamentarians coming and say, I want to put a bill to do something about the NIS, whatever it is that they come up with, some solution. They always, you in technology. Technology is all about finding a solution yes. to solve some issue, whether it's an app, whether it's bringing in some kind of technology that works. Why is it that we not seen any parliamentarian independently wise tabling some kind of bill that would show the, 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 the metal within that person, the metal as a politician? I read something that was so, it made me sit up and take notice that a politician, I think it's a congressman in the United States, wanted to table a bill or about to table a bill which says if you want to enter the United States on a visitor visa, you got to lodge down 15000 It means that all the people who visit in the U.S. from Guyana would have to put down $15,000, not as a show money, just to make sure you come back to Guyana. It is... It's, it's not laughable. It is because that person is catering to whoever is voting for him. And that's what we got to understand. You could go across the table and say to the, to the, to the government of the day, look, I am going to give to you um, support in a particular area on something that is so important that it crosses the floor and it should have a national front. But you got to give me support on this bill that me as an opposition is table in here today. Why are we not seeing more of that kind of actions, those kind of and transactions coming from our politicians? And These I, are the serious talks we got to have. And, and here, here is my response to that. I don't have the right answers for you, but but my response would be, in any country, you know, um, to make those changes and to pressure and advocate, um, it requires a very strong, sizable middle class. Unfortunately, in guy and it's the middle class who who've been to school. They're professionals. They're doctors. They're attorneys. They're um, uh, you know they're into you know business and all that kind of stuff. It's the middle class who really drives a country, you know, um, and 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 they pressure that one percent that's in government to make those changes that that helps them of course as middle class but also helps everyone else and move the country forward in ghana today i think we have a very very thin layer of middle class you know um we have a, a very large uh, poorer um um uh, rural uh, um kind of lay back uh, 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 voters, um, our middle class, and this comes back to our topic, uh, are all in the diaspora, mm -hmm. you know, and they're making their changes there. And so between the politicians who make law and who creates policies and who, who has the, the power and authority to get things done, between them and the rest of the country, which is the bulk of the voters, is a thin layer of, of our most tired um, um, frustrated middle class uh, that 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 feels that you know the country is being trampled upon now, and so so that was that would be my kind of analysis oh, um, of, of why why I believe um, things that are moving right away. I, we need more voices and more people like yourself uh, and and in the media and everywhere else 
to talk about these things more. I think like, I don't, look, I don't, I don't, if, you don't, if you don't talk about uh, them, they don't, they don't become don't, a problem. I don't subscribe to your theory of the importance of, well, not importance, the actual emphasis you put on the um, indispensability of the middle class. That is playing down uh, a huge force of working class people that keep a country going, the farmers, the public servants, the security forces. But I, I am but not, what I, I'm saying I am not going to pers pursue that. I think the middle class have their, in, in any country, the middle class have their agenda. And the problem with classes is that those classes have their own agenda and they, they do not gel. The middle class, I, I have seen from the time even before Dr. Jay Gunn and Burnham and Aston Chase formed the PPP, the, the clash between the middle class and the rest of the society, also uh, the bifurcation along racial lines. But I, I want to take you back to the uh, AFC. When you were the campaign manager, which is a significant, substantial position, and as the campaign went on, and of course you left because your brother died, did you see signs of uh, uh, collective deterioration that would not make good for the AFC coming into power? <laughs> did you see people that you say, um, I never thought the AFC would be like this? Because I've been around at that time, and I had, like in the WPA when I was a young guy in the 70s, you seem to have reservations about people you function with. And I've, I've had my reservations about, you know, in the 2011 campaign, I never went up to the top building. I just was with the lower flat, with the ordinary people. Because you sense some things that were not right, and you just hope those people would correct themselves. My question to you is, did you see signs that this party is going to go in the wrong direction, and it did went in the wrong direction. Uh, you're absolutely right. Being a campaign manager is 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 a very very um, you know strategic position in a campaign. Uh, it carries a lot of weight, and it and it, it and it should also carry a lot of um, responsibility. You know, in terms of guiding and directing um, um, the party. My problem with AFC, even as the campaign manager, you know, uh, and, and while I was there and before and after and so on, was their lack of being grounded to an ideology. You know, I think I think it was a bunch of uh, is a scattered group of people that created a band you know, and trying to um, get something done. You've got a bunch of disgruntled PPP people, a bunch of disgruntled PNC people come in here, no ideology. All they want to do is batak the parties, no, no specific agenda. In fact, a, a, a lot of what um, came out in their manifesto and so on was just ideas that we picked from this guy and ideas we picked from this guy and we put it there, you know, uh, I, there, was, there was a lack of um, and, and, and they were pushing what, uh, what, what is it called the liberal democracy what is a democracy everybody think what they want to think and do what they want to do parties and campaigns especially it has to be a disciplined approach so, so that was my biggest concern and because of the lack of ideology they weren't answerable in terms of um, uh, how to get this done you know and what to do and so you have people who are building their own camps within the party and 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 i'm like how could you run a campaign with persons who are building camps and th th this came from from leadership of the afc who were who were uh, you know uh, on a daily and 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 you know f f f fundamentally as part of the leadership were were building their own uh, strongholds and all that kind of stuff I, yeah. I i had a difficult time um managing the um the operations side of the campaign simply because you could not get people to to um 
to sit and talk and, and go through their, their issues. And it all comes back because they have no ideology, so they're not, they're not, they're everywhere. And to a large extent, in as much as AFC tried to undo or to um, fix or to um, adjust the way politics is, is done in Guyana through by race, I think they were, to a large extent, they were, they all, they were also consumed by uh, by race politics within AFC and and I've seen that and it's unfortunate you, know, you heard that this is the campaign you know, manager uh, saying the campaign manager 2011 saying that within the AFC they had the issues of race I want to ask you a question well, you, 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 yeah. uh, you I saw, mean I mean you saw uh, what, that playing out in the because, because race permeates everything in Guyana including a cricket team including sports including uh, churches and everything everywhere else P uh, the, the the AFC could not escape that, you know, and and there was, you know, this push and tug and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I, I believe I believe they um, lacked clarity on why they came together. Um, we will be bringing Indians and blacks together to work to, f to change Guyana and alliance and all that kind of stuff. But they did not, um, uh, you know, answer the fundamental questions of why we need to bring blacks and Indians uh, on, on a single well, platform. One of the questions I, I say I must ask you when you, yeah, yeah. When you come here, from what I, the clip that I played, Mr. Badal thinks that you know Guyana, you know how to get things done. But when, you, when we saw by, by 2019, when we saw what the AFC had become, I mean, really a monstrosity, it had to hurt third parties because people put their hopes in this third party. Um, the two most successful third parties in Guyana was the United Force in 1964. And then in 2011, the AFC got seven um, votes. I remember... Yeah. I remember um, Kemajan Chetan in my presence telling a foreigner, no third party has ever done so good. Third party does degenerate it. Don't you think that had to hurt third party chances in 2020? And therefore, you should have been careful in being the campaign manager for another third party? Uh, well, uh, yes, of course, of course, AFC um, made that. Um, I mean, there were there were many third parties, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were, there were like, Anu, you know, the whole lot of them. Uh, and and uh, they, they, I mean that that reflects that people want to see something different in our politics, which is good. We should always encourage as many parties as possible to be part of the process. Um, um, so so yeah, I mean, I think. AFC destroyed all the third parties' um, um, opportunity to do better than what they did. You know, I mean, I don't think there was a lot of um, the third parties all put together was not a lot. You know, it was less than what AFC had in in 2011. You know, so the the. Um, the your question is you know why why you go to another third party i think what inspired me was the message of badal i'm i'm in business i believe i believe economics should run a country not politics i believe i believe, I believe politicians should work for the economy and that the economy working for politicians and i think to a large extent what badal represented in his message i i i was glad to be part of 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 amplify amplifying that to 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 promote smaller government bigger private sector more incentives for economic growth uh, more investments and so on and to a large extent we can see uh, he, the, the 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 message that he um, and, and that we promoted and changed Guyana a lot of it uh, to a large extent uh, um, the current administration you see them doing just, just about the same thing, you know, reducing taxes, uh, you know, uh, encouraging more investments and so on. So, 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 yes, it, it, we knew, and I would assume all all third parties knew that they ain't gonna win no damn election. But but can we can we impact the um, uh, the narrative? 
you know and to a large extent i think that's exactly what uh, badal and change guyana um, was meant to do is to put some of the key issues on the front burner but uh, the damage you know. was already done oh, of course of course from from a from a politics side of it but uh, but i think you see you see not every party goes to win some parties um go to influence the narrative mm -hmm. to influence policy making in the future to influ to highlight different communities you know you might have a a pro black party coming up in the next election that wants to highlight um you know issues within the african guyanese community you might have one that that's want to promote more business you know and so on so 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 these special interest parties uh, and the tragedy for guyana for me the tragedy for guyana for me is that um there isn't an opportunity for more representative politics like like, like i can't understand why barbicians for example, i'm from barbies you know why barbicians could not form their own party and send two of their members to parliament of course our constitution doesn't allow it because we have a we have a party system but and these these are some, these are the things we should be talking about we should be talking about how do we get our people in the parliament not how to get a party into politics in, into parliament and and, well, that's and, and, and and that's a tragedy because I, I, because I, I, smaller parties you're talking about first pass the post would be a better um would be a better system for based what you want wouldn't first pass the post serve that purpose better i i i would say that a system that allows me and you the, uh, the, uh, we live in Barbies. We operate in Barbies. We generate taxes for Barbies. We do business in Barbies. We want to attract business and investment in Barbies. We should have a voice at the national level. You know, um, uh, like, like you asked me about the, the politicians in America. When that, when that, but my, when my local district politician goes to the state senate, right? He's not talking for the state. state. He's talking for my district. His constituent. His constituent. He's talking about my garbage collection. When he goes there, he's talking about my garbage collection. He's not talking about, he could care less if they got flood in Miami or if they got hurricane in Tallahassee. He's more interested in this garbage. So that is a tragedy of, 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 of the two big parties occupying and using up all the oxygen and, and not allowing um, smaller parties with special interests to be elected to parliament special interest is not a bad word by the way just to clarify to the viewers you know special interests mean that you know you have an interest in a certain area that you want to um, see some movement in what, what you what do you think about um what's your opinion your analysis of dr mohammed Ali? do you see a different president emerging in a very positive way that will leave, leave a very large legacy? Absolutely, absolutely. I think um, Dr. Uh, Muhammad Irfan Ali, um, uh, you know, I've, I've known him before he was president, you know. Um, uh, in fact, our ROAR, uh, I was part of ROAR, of course, and ROAR office You was, said you were a founding member of ROAR. <laughs> yeah, founding member of ROAR. Uh, our office of ROAR was in Lenora, um, straight across, you, you know, where he lived, where he yeah. lived you know. Yeah. So he used to, um, quite sure he came a few times to ROAR office. Um, but yeah, I think, I think he has done an in, incredible job in energizing, especially the younger folks. You know, the younger um, afro Guyanese, the younger Indian, the, you know, just about everyone across the country. I'm seeing that um, he's able to um, hit the right notes, um, um, you know, focusing on some of the key areas that needs um, uh, uh, development. You know, uh, he's, he's, he may, remains very active in ensuring that... Um, that uh, you know uh, you know th things like investments and jobs and 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 sports and these kind of things i mean look at how much activities that are happening right now in guyana you know who would have ever thought i i, I, I was traveling a few nights back uh, with my wife into guyana and and i'm and, and i'm and i'm looking in front of me there's a hundred people on the on the uh, immigration line and behind me there's 300 and and of, of that about 15 to 20 percent were Guyanese 
you know, I mean, the, the look guy these. The rest look like Russians and uh, and, and <laughs> yes, it is. not those Russians, right? Yeah. <laughs> you remember and America? Trump <laughs> said the Russians came here to win the election. I, I don't know <laughs> Russians because when you... they were talking, I could have sensed their Russian thing. But I told my wife, how would you ever believe that Guyana? Um, would have a, a, a people flowing in. You were a campaign manager in so the 20 election party. Did the Russians came in to win the election? I, 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 I don't know <laughs> what was that all about. Um, I, I, I doubt whether a, a, a Russian with a high level of technology can can intervene into a very manual process that we have here. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> I want to ask you so, we, so, so we, very too manual. I'm going to ask you two questions, and uh, because I know that we are really headed on to the crunch time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, is it your opinion, being as I, I would say an insider uh, of the FC, that um, AFC being consumed with that collation between 2015 to 2020? that it was a matter of ignorance or was it a matter of um, not knowing how that politics is supposed to be playing out, how the partnership is really supposed to run? Was it a matter of greed? What, is, what were your conclusions as to what really caused that coalition? I mean, they entered 2015 with a lot of goodwill. A lot of goodwill. A lot of goodwill. How could goodwill. you get it wrong within five years that you come and 20, 2020 was... Um, a catastrophe for, for not only um, the AFC, but it would have been they a be, catastrophe. Um, they I think predicted for a long time, it would be a John Deere. But what, what, me. what, 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 what really me. was the mindset of the leadership within the AFC? Uh, was it was it greed? Was it um, that Public is ignorance? Or they didn't know how to play politics with their partner? I, what love of power? I, I don't, I can't answer your questions. I was not in their circles uh, or in their head. Um, I don't know what they were thinking. But um, uh, at that time, I was busy with Change Guyana and, and Badal. And when we saw the results came out, we, you know, we, 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 we gave all our support towards um, ensuring that the results are, are, um, are not manipulated and and they're presented as 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 credible as possible mm -hmm. um we um we 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 supported um whatever um uh, you know uh, the 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 workers within gcom were were going to do you know and 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 all the staff from ppp and and all the other this, the third parties played an important role there too we can't forget we lend our voice you know battle was one of the first um, a candidate from the third part, from the list of third party, came on and said, "Let you know, let's count it, let's do it the right way, and and whoever win wins." We, um, Nigel Hines was uh, was in, is Nigel Hines? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, the accountant. The yeah, accountant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you forgot your own five minutes. <laughs> no, no. Look, okay, there's, there's so many Hines and Nigels yes, around. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I gotta make sure I get it right. So Nigel Hines uh, went to the press conference at sleep in. Um, where we threw all our support um, for for the presidency of um, uh, for uh, Irfan uh, Muhammad Irfan Ali, right? But so, very quickly, so, I'm being told that we are all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think in your closing, Freddie, and then uh, you will be go to Freddie. You are also doing something fantastic on the technology side of things. You've been building uh, solutions, <laughs> websites, um, apps that is going to help the Guyana, um, the Guyanese populace and the diaspora bridge some divide there. Could you tell us a little very quickly in doing that and then maybe you want to say something to the people? All right, well, th thanks a lot, um, Leonard, for that. Um, basically, as a, as, as a diaspora advocate and someone who has lived almost 80% of my life in the diaspora, um, I know the value of the diaspora to Guyana. Guyana is at a critical point of, you know, just, just, you know, exploding in every direction. And we need that middle class to come back with their knowledge and their finance and everything else. Um, and, 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 and I see, and in the diaspora, I see the energy uh, to, to come back to Guyana. Most of these online digital platforms that are telecasting, Globally, if you look at where their viewers are coming from, is from the diaspora. 
you know, I would say almost 60%. We got a lot of them here. Good night, folks. Yeah, yeah, good night, guys, yes. people. 60% of, of whether, whether it's critics or whether it's, um, you know, the, 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 the vice president's press conference or whether it's um, um, the president's, you know, giving a speech somewhere, I would say 60 to 70% are diaspora people who have an interest in Guyana. So I, so, so I, I went beyond the talk of engagement and started building the bridges. You know, uh, and the bridges, the bridge, the bridges are available and can be used to connect diaspora with Guyana. I've created a few platform. Uh, I have a company in 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 Florida. Uh, we have a, a bunch of uh, developers, and all we do is look at f uh, where there's gaps. Um, that needs to be filled. Now, diaspora needs a few things in Guyana. Diaspora needs to come to Guyana. They love to visit Guyana. They love to in, 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 engage like with to our eat. tourism product. They like to do. And, yeah. and so on, right? Uh, that's one of their needs. The diaspora wants to invest in Guyana. They want to be part of this economy too. You know, um, uh, the, the Americans and Canadians want to be part of um, the, the Guyana economy. G G Guyanese diaspora wants to be part of it too. Uh, so we've created a platform for that. You know, um, Guyanese uh, want to access legal services in Guyana, whether it's registering a business or a power of attorney or um, or so many other things. So we've created that. So whether it's kaitor.com for tourism that, that allows the tourism sector to be a little more disciplined, to be a little more predictable and to be a lot more um, uh, um, packaged, you know, um, you know, we have a platform for that. And see, to a large extent, when the diaspora wants to engage with America, Guyana's tourism product, Guyana's tourism product is, is invisible. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not visible. And if it is visible, it's very, dis very disjointed. You know, so I'm yeah, not gonna. Yeah, go, I, I know yeah, I got. We got things, right, but yeah. but um, tourism people. Yeah, I'm going to like what. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I have these. They're one of my clients. Uh, they're one of my clients here too. Well, so, Freddie, so very quickly, they would love that. Um, and it's interesting that we have those kind of technology. We got to bring you back, um, my friend. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, well, thanks for being here. And it was quite interesting, especially the political part. So my my final question to you. When you're coming again, and for how long you'll be staying? Because you, you just walk, came man. from a week. You like what? You know, Freddie. You listen walk to Walkman. Walk, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that. <laughs> we this the them this month. Oh, same this thing. Man. Same thing. No, Walkman. You push in a cassette. Okay, same thing. Yeah. This month you push in. <laughs> I don't know if anybody oh, yeah, who's listening here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Freddie, listen to this man. Who do you have? And I am. Um, can I can I get you a disc? Yes. No, let me tell you. I'm gonna get him a disc. Freddie Kisu had me in New York the last time I went. They searched him for rechargeable batteries. So put in the disc. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> I went there and um, you embarrassed yourself. No, I had to take myself out out of the way to go and get uh, uh, rechargeable batteries for this man. I said, "Wow, I don't know of anybody who has a rechargeable battery and a mango, or who's using a mango pelter and a mango pelter." <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty yeah. soon for you, folks. It's been interesting. It's good to talk, thank you, um, thank you, thank and you. I'm really happy that we have the diaspora so very um, invested in this country. Um, and our guest here tonight uh, has been uh, playing a role in so many ways. It's not wrong. Uh, you have your opinion and you play a role in developing this country. We all have to, we all agree to disagree. That's one. Two, um, I said it and I'm very passionate about it. I would like to see our politicians, all sides of the divide, be independent. Uh, you know, you have a brain, um, especially in the opposition side. Many things uh, still need to be worked out. There has to be something that the government will agree with you if you to table a bill that benefits the people of Guyana. Okay. There's so many things that you could do to really serve a purpose as a representative of the people. So it has been a pleasure coming to you, myself and Freddie Kisun. We're coming to you again on Monday. This has been the Freddie Kisun Gildari Show or Gildari Fred Kisun Show. And we want to say thank you very much to our guest here tonight, all the way from Florida but he's been back and forth all the time and you could tell them your name too I can't pronounce it Salahuddin Nasruddin yeah, yeah there's an accent to that I can't really get right Salahuddin Nasruddin Nasruddin that's yeah. okay Freddie Kissing yeah, you could pronounce it I can uh, mm -hmm. you take care it's been a pleasure as always